Hey everyone, Monday, March 27th, 2023. And uh, wow, are things super exciting. Uh, first of all, I do wanna just mention that even though I am driving, this is no different than just talking while you're driving. It's like a dash cam. And uh, I always take all the time necessary to focus on the driving and I'm uh, entirely aware of my surroundings. So when I do this sort of thing, this is what makes humans human. So when you hear criticism of someone going, uh, you can't talk and shoot a video while you're driving, that is really just them projecting their own insecurities about not being able to do such things. And it's understandable because multitasking and um, specifically separating different tasks in your head of different types so that you can do each one at a high level of competency. While humans are good at it, it doesn't particularly come natural. It takes lots of practice. Things especially like driving, you'll find people who are terrified to say, uh, go on the highway or do any sort of, uh, you know, city driving, driving through Manhattan or, you know, Boston or Philadelphia. Uh, which are some of my particular sweet spots. Maybe not Boston, but I am a regular Philly or New York driver. And so for anyone who knows, that means, you know, like a cab driver, you develop other abilities. You know, your certain parts of your brain get fatter. And people who who don't do that, uh, or, or analogies, analogist things to that, uh, might have a difficult time understanding why it's safe, why you can reach something like a half century old and still going pretty well. I've been a driver since I was 15, not even 16. 16 was a legal driving age in Pennsylvania where I grew up, but you know, uh, I had my Mustang convertible with my bar mitzvah money uh, at, uh, and it was an old one. It was a $1,500 rusted floorboard uh, Boss model Mustang convertible 1971 pre OPEC oil embargo gas guzzling uh, Mustang. And uh, I could not wait to drive that thing. And so I did. And that was you know, some of the formative experiences of my life. I became one with uh, Bondo and fiberglass. And, uh, that was a lot of fun. I wish I did more of the engine stuff, but I really focused on the body work because the engine was fine. It was a 351 Cleveland race car engine, stock racing engine. And I didn't have to do much to it. So now I'm driving a Jeep. Jeeps are like, uh, <laughs> you don't have to think about anything except uh, regular maintenance because stuff just don't break. You know, they're built to a different spec. And ah, the stuff I'm thinking about, all right, yeah, building stuff to different specs, right? So the interesting stuff going on right now is OpenAI, ChatGPT, Bing, and to a lesser degree, BARD. I'm sure it's very interesting behind the doors of Google, but the stuff they're letting out to the public is, is really just in order to not be, uh, you know, completely humiliated. Uh, and embarrassed and, you know, ultimately, you know, driven into, uh, I don't want to say out of business. It's not like Google's going to go out of business overnight, but when 75% of your revenue stream comes from AdWord clicks on a search result page and Microsoft's changing the game on you by changing expectations, by controlling that default desktop, by controlling the operating system as they do, and doing such a great job with their implementation with citation links and the better copy and paste system. Whew. Yeah. Well, anyway, the plugin stuff is of great interest. Microsoft uh, Copilot the uh, GitHub Copilot product that works under VS Code. I'm gonna try to use it under Vim, right? Because Copilot is not limited to VS Code. And that is a vendor lock-in move. Now, having code suggested to you is not vendor lock-in, 
but relying on having code suggested to you is vendor lock-in. It's habit forming. So I am going to partake in Copilot in uh, maybe the path less traveled, uh, get a little, you know, uh, experience on what it's like under Vim. A very small Venn diagram of people, Vim plus Copilot. And I am going to dive into the project that is so me, that's ready to happen, that will make a big difference, that will improve my work, that will create the compounding returns snowball effect, right? So what is that? Just doing your job isn't enough anymore because machines can also do your job. So why you and not a machine? <sighs> it's not an easy thing to answer. And the world will recalibrate around this reality eventually. There will be things like, you know, really cheap energy, uh, really cheap intelligence and uh, free in uh, free income, universal minimum income. Uh, the abolition, the abolition. It's not about the abolishing of the uh, eradication of poverty. It's possible in our lifetimes. We have to hope that uh, the powers that be. We have to contribute what bits we can to see to it that. While machines, you know, cut into our ability to produce economic value, while they steal humans' ability to add to the value chain, we have to figure other things out for humans <laughs> to have that sense of self-worth, of self-satisfaction, of meaning, of purpose, of belonging. The whole Maslow self-realization, self-actualization uh, pyramid of needs, the Maslow Pyramid of Needs, uh, has to be recalibrated in light of the fact that all the menial and tedious labor, check, done by machines, except we're cheaper by humans, but that will be less and less, and then more and more creative endeavors, where things like genuine inspiration, that spark that most people think is human, but, you know, deep learning and, you know, the beating of the Go Grandmaster has taught us, uh, maybe not so much. Maybe true creativity is, uh, you know, not only within the reach of machines, but ultimately machines will be able to scale creativity, do design iterations, do radical, you know, um, new things that it tries based on uh, deductions, realizations. You don't think that's coming. It's all coming. It's all coming. So this has to be, at least in the in the short to medium term, extensions of human capabilities. It has to uh, give us superpowers. It has to allow us to do whatever it is we do already uh, that much better, right? And, uh, I have a project planned. I have one of these actually planned. I'm going to do it. This person is coming up on my right, accelerating hard because he saw me changing lanes to get into the lane I need to be in to exit. So, welcome to SI. And now he's riding his brakes. just basically passing on the right. I guess so was I, because uh, it does become an exit only, and I forget about that always in this exit. So anyway, uh, da -da 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 my project, fully unbounded, fully unbounded web scraping with a browser, most often from your own IP, 
from the IPs of your choosing through a proxy system in ways that cloud providers sandboxed Python execution environments most likely aren't going to currently can't allow you to do that's what I'm going to do standard IO it's going to work a lot like a um, like a Linux command command line a command that supports arguments those arguments can be referenced to external files so that the arguments can be larger than what you can stuff conveniently on a Linux command and uh, it'll do I.O. Uh, with a web browser sending automation commands to a web browser the web browser does the automation comes back with its data its findings whatever and uh, rinse and repeat but those automation commands can be those provided by one of these uh, AI systems and it doesn't need your credentials. Credentials and configuration and login stuff is handled uh, separately and locally. So the missing pieces of the code that the uh, AIs aren't going to be able to run for you, even in a sandbox, I provide. I provide locally. I provide in the way that I normally do this without AI. However, it becomes super powered and supercharged by virtue of the fact that AI helps control the IO to the automated browser through Microsoft Streamlight or Google Play, uh, Google uh, Puppeteer. More often, Microsoft Playwright these days because of uh, various reasons. It supports more browsers. I've got to look at Puppeteer. Maybe they caught up, but Playwright is a way to do browser automation these days with Edge or with Chrome or with Firefox or with Safari, WebKit stuff. And uh, with your logins, with session context and all the happy stuff that's so hard to get happening in a cloud sandbox. Thanks for joining me. Hope to see you again soon. And of course, do not forget to subscribe and follow along in this most... Uh, important maybe ever of uh, my projects uh, this is sort of a, a culmination of many things kind of project but also starting from scratch and easy to follow along and what I need in my new job capacity at this amazing new job that I have it's uh, kind of pinch myself um, suited for